The twenty-sided core made him feel physically sick. Once he had sneaked into a temple of the dark art, and he hadn't liked what he smelt and saw there, this felt like that. As quick as he could, he wrangled the icosahedron into the armature. The wheels began to spin, then glow. The sick feeling quickly spun away. Now he only felt sad. He had lost good friends for this war apparatus. He carried his prize back to the Farfarer. Now he had to make his next move. There was a key Imperial outpost on the Nexus. If this really was some sort of super weapon, he could use it to wreak havoc on the enemy. And if it wasn't, well, better to know that before the final battle. But maybe he should show it to some scientists first. There was an observatory on the Nexus. Maybe he should go there before he fired it. Oh, that's tempting just because, ooh, maybe I don't have it assembled correctly. Maybe I could get some better attacks. Or I could stop fussing about and attack. Renato had never been much of a student. At Swordfu School, he'd never read the books, just looked at the pictures. Hmm. And Zenobia. But weapons he understood. His gut told him that the Skyripper would work great. He would use it to take out the Imperial outpost. And what's the worst that could happen? The thing wouldn't work, and then he'd take it to the scientists. Right? <laughs> exactly. Unless the scientists, like, exploded, then, uh... Then that wouldn't happen at all. As he set out down the path, Renato wondered why the parts of the Sky River had only surfaced now, thousands of years after the Transcendent Emperor had discarded it. This Emperor, Isengrim III, had performed terrible, bloodthirsty rituals to invoke the Lost Gods. Perhaps that was bringing up lost artifacts. How perfect, then, that the Sky Ripper would reappear to be his destruction. Uh-oh. I might be going the wrong way. Test the Sky Ripper on the Imperial Outpost. You got it! No! No! I wish to go back down! Crap. I didn't know that was gonna lead me up here. He I was just like there were more pylons he could use the hook on. They really needed to construct additional pylons. <laughs> what they really need to do is construct more workbenches so that way I can make my sword better. That'd be nice. It'd be a good start. I hate when they lock off fast, and they've done it multiple times already by now. Oh, I should be breaking everything. What the heck am I doing? I've left some things alone because I'm like, oh, I don't need health anymore. And I realize, oh wait, no, they can give me ore. Uh-oh. That's new. Avoid the Warlock's fire spell. It will damage everyone in the area once it explodes. Cool, alright. Give me the combos. Whew. All right. I really wanted to have like a higher than 30 combo and I got it because I'm awesome. Could be more awesome, but I fucked up. Oh no, where am I now? Why do I get why do I get he taken to so many random paths? Slaughtering ravens. Maybe it was time to test out the new weapon. He turned a knob on the Sky Ripper. It made strange mechanical noises. The wheel spun faster. It began to hum. The Sky Ripper was following his every step. 
At least it acknowledged him as the master. But there was no trigger. How was he supposed to fire it? Fire, he said. Nothing happened. Well, maybe it just needed to warm up. After all, it hadn't been fired in thousands of years. Take a leap of faith, said the inscription. No! That'd be a terrible idea. You can see how many items I missed just from us floating over here. There's a lot of shit down below. I pressed B, and nothing happened. So I guess we will find out what this does later on. Oh, thank gosh. All right. Gem socketing. This is the gem socketing menu. Here you can equip powerful gems that will augment both your offensive and defensive abilities. Your gauntlet has three sockets into which you can put gems. All right, cool. Each gem has three levels and its effect increased with each level. Or uh, has each gem has three levels and its effect increases with each level. Picking up a gem and already, that you already have will automatically upgrade that gem's level. You can find more gems in the chest scattered throughout Boreas, if you're lucky enough. Well, I don't have any of these, so I guess we're not worried about gems for now. I could make a fire sword. I can do both. I can make a this fire sword. sword from the south was terrific for barbecuing sausages and ravens. And I can also upgrade my normal sword. All right, quickly recover health over time. Cost energy. Oh, okay. So I assume, uh... Hey. Hey. I'm a Firefox, thought Renato. Oh my god. <laughs> Gosh darn it, Renato. Well, now that we have my fire sword... I can light so many things up! Whoa, no. It's automatically firing! That's awesome! I didn't get a lot of combo points. I was making a whining noise now, and its wheels were spinning so fast he could no longer see them. Renato had a thought. These? He asked. The Sky Ripper began to glow. Boom! The outpost burst into flame. Ravens flapped out screaming, wings on fire. <laughs> the base was his. The fire speaker toad came hopping out. Renato! It croaked, sounding like a toad version of Zenobia. Don't use the Sky Ripper. It will destroy the world. Yeah, sure it will, cracked Renato. Pull the other one. If you don't trust me, go see Calaveras. That sounded sensible. Why did she always have to sound sensible all the time? Oh, it was infuriating. <laughs> of course, she would say that. He was supposed to hurry and bring the Sky Ripper to the council so the rebels could actually win the war. But what if she was right? Damn it. Take the Skyrim to the Rebels? Go see Calveras? Of course she was lying, probably. I am just gonna take it to the Rebel base! Just this once, he would not let Zenobia get into his head with her logic and her wisdom and her appeals to reason. He was a fox. He'd go with his instincts, and it would all work out like it always did. Oh, he was sounding like a reckless idiot, even to himself. But if there was one thing Renato could never bring himself to do, it was turn back on a decision he'd made. We'll see about that. We might end up having to uh, play through, get the Sky Ripper, and then see what happens when we divert paths. Because maybe things will be different if I do that. I don't know if you even get the Sky Ripper if you just focus on helping out the rebels. Imperials were flapping and cawing all around the ruins. They must be panicking with rumors flying of the super weapon. Maybe they hoped to find and destroy the base before he could put the Sky Ripper into action. The Sky Ripper was whining and heating up. It would be time to use that energy soon. Good. Nara felt like he was ready to learn new things. Thank goodness he didn't have to go to school for that. All right, what do we got? 
I don't care about the uh, speed stuff. After a successful counter until your next action. I... I just... It feels like it hasn't happened yet. Oh well. I will go for a perfect strike. It was more and more extraordinary. That does sound wonderful. I love being extraordinary. So if I do this, oh, I can summon fire down on me, sort of, kind of. I have to experiment with that some more. Give me some more enemies to attack. Or don't. I mean, it's totally fine too. Oh god, I hope there aren't like... Oh jeez. Diverting paths everywhere else too. And when I say diverting paths, I mean, uh... Talking about this was a fantastic weapon. Ravens burst into flames with just a touch of its killer beam. He was tempted to leave it on all the time, but he didn't want to accidentally slice off some council toad's head or tongue. She'd been trying to distract him. Well, this time, no one was going to distract him. Ha! Bet you never saw that coming. <laughs> I get it. But yeah, there's a chance that, like, we when we go into these areas, there's, like, different paths to go around. And so we could go left and end up finishing the mission one way, or we could go right and end up finishing the mission another way. I have no idea. Because I seem to be conveniently going ways that just end the mission. Which is weird. I don't know if I'm just, like, really unlucky? Or what? But I want items! Not to finish the place immediately! I don't even have a gem! I don't even know I'm supposed to be getting a gem! It feels like this one of those games that's kinda, like, really on the short side. Look Long at this! Stairs. So he was close to the rebel base. The fuck? Nothing was on fire. So far, so good. See? I could have gone right, and I have no idea what would have been, what would, what would have been to the right. But if I went left, which I did, that suddenly, awesome. I have other things here. Well, at least I have perfect strike. That's kind of cool. So if I do perfect strike. The attacks count for more of the combo, which is awesome. I thought that was opening up to look at me. That would have been freaky. All right, here we have an ice door. Yeah, I wanted to see if I could melt it. It's not how it works though. Ooh, secret passage! Nice! As he headed towards the council chamber, Renato felt everyone watching him. You saved the rebellion, said the council speaker. Frankly, we were afraid you'd turn aside to save that idiot Lapino. If you never make sacrifices, he said, you're probably not doing the right thing. The speaker nodded. Are you ready to lead the charge? Let's roll, he said, with grim satisfaction. Renato set sail for the fleet. The Sky Ripper had lost its wine. It was humming now, as if it had taken some time to seat properly. He had always been irresponsible. This time, he'd done the right thing, made the hard decisions. He was a real hero. He hadn't let himself be distracted by old friends or old lovers turned enemies. Finally, he could be proud of himself. But for how long? 
There are things that we do not have. So many things. And I still don't know what a truth is. Is a truth something that you discover after you beat the game? Can we time travel at some point? I don't know. He was ready. So was Skyripper. Chapter 5. Yes, we can. had a will of its own. It picked out its own targets and set them on fire. Now, this was going to be a short battle. He would set the ships on fire if he didn't need them to get to the Emperor. And he wondered if he'd see Zenobia or if she'd flee. <laughs> Wouldn't she be proud of him? At least, a bit of respect. He'd become an all-conquering hero. We'll see. The last Zenobia we met was fake, right? Because it said that it was a toad. It sounded like a toad Sorry, version of Zenobia. Thought Renato. Rather than actual Zenobia, right? But I have no idea. Anyways, look, see, we have one truth revealed, two truths revealed, three truths revealed. Oh, cool. Stunning dash, ultimate sword foo, kill any enemy in a single strike. Oh. That's kind of cool. Attack enemies at any distance? Oh, that sounds awesome. Haven't you always wanted to do that? But I'll just go for combat skills for now. I don't need extra health. Not yet, at least. Oh, you know what? There you go. I saw the uh, the freeze of time. Dash! Oh, jeez. Don't be shy. I got scared. I saw the fire thing, and I was like, "Oh no, it's gonna ruin my day." Ooh, we teleport onto a ship. Fantastic. We go forward. We must destroy the emperor. What's his name? Yeah, that happens when you take absolutely no damage. Did that flag, like, attach itself to the ground and get longer? What the hell happened there? I saw it, like, extend. Uh, nope. Don't care about the combo if it means I don't think it hurt. Well, you like having a gobbler for a pet. Why don't I get any fire essence from the fire monsters? You know? It's something I would expect, but it doesn't happen. Oh jeez. No, 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 I don't like cannons. Can I hit them back? Ah no! That's the answer. There was a parchment on a signpost. It was from her. Every Ugh. time you fire, you risk the destruction of the universe. That's insane. We surrender. A trick? I don't believe it. Maybe she really believed it. He could hear horns blaring the retreat. Maybe it was true. Maybe they had one. Well, we'll have to see, but I just, I just strongly doubt it. Oh, no, come back! Okay, I have to go on that one. Aha! Renato wondered if his future self had commissioned these poems. <laughs> That's a funny point to bring up. It could totally happen. The only thing I don't like about my, my fun little gadget here is the fact that it kind of ruins combos. It like zaps people, killing them 
or stunning them before they can get over to me. And that makes me sad. There were stickers all over the platform for really hot lady foxes with pictures and addresses and everything. You can't get away from me, buddy! <laughs> I understand the ways of the sword. Ooh. Sword and cannon. I should use my fire ability a little bit more often. I just forget. The fights are really, really fast in this game. They're over like 10 seconds sometimes. And I need like 15 seconds before I go, oh, you know, I can do other cooler things besides stab, stab, stab. Hmm. I can't go left. And yet, I see other things up there. It's a big ship! Oh! I see, I might make my way down and then into the bigger ship. Got you. New enemy! Shield grunts will block your attacks. Grab and throw into another... or throw another grunt into him, and his shield will be knocked away. Whoa! Jesus! Alright, I really wish they hadn't frozen me right there. And I could have figured that out a little bit earlier for myself. Oh, those are some big monsters. And there was Zenobia, wearing the white robes of surrender. She came and kneeled before him. Why didn't you listen to me? I was trying to save you too. You're the enemy, he said. I was never your enemy, Renato. Say what? Then she spoke a terrible word and made a gesture with her hand. She stopped moving, covered in frost. And he wondered why she'd frozen herself. Then the Sky Ripper froze. And then, for a moment, he felt very cold. And discovered that he couldn't move. The next thing he knew, the sun was a giant. Monstrously red. It took up half the sky. And he was in a parched red desert. And then, he was on fire. What? Okay, that was weird. He could have sworn he'd just died. Instead, he was on the Farfarer, sailing away from Ubar. And it was still burning. He'd fled burning Ubar years ago, hadn't he? And now he was back there. Had all those years fighting the Empire been nothing but a vision into the future? A useful vision, if it was true. He'd learned something. Zenobia still had feelings for him. Ooh, okay. Oh, God. So... Oh, no. We have to find out 24 different stories. Story number seven, Renardo Nukem. So if you just go straight down the path... You assemble the weapon, a bunch of bad things happen, and then the scun evolves into a scorching red giant! Her spell froze Renardo for billions of years. Oh! So this, the, the sun didn't turn into a giant because of me, it was because we got frozen and time traveled? Well, that sucks. So that's the real Zenobia, huh? Well, we find other truths, we get extra levels, and thankfully we found one. So if we go for the first set of choices, maybe we can find something interesting there too. So I'm imagining these are all gonna- I, I, I have no idea, honestly. He'd made bad choices. But now, when the real battle came, he wouldn't make those choices. He wouldn't make the same mistake twice. The book's pages began to flip backwards, towards the beginning. And he realized that his adventure was just beginning. 
Will we be, will the clouds be... parted over the Isles of Boreas. It was time to choose. The rebellion was in trouble. Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced. Or so a scholar in the mountains had told him. Surely the weapon that banished the lost gods could defeat the Emperor. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert. The Emperor had brought the Sky Ripper pieces up out of ancient burial by his obscene rituals. Could this be where the Iblis Stone was hidden? Someone better get it before he does, thought Renardo. On the other hand, his old friend Lepino needed rescuing. Lepino was no game changer, but could Renardo really leave an old friend to the Ravens? Ah, So I can't actually go back and save... Peter. It puts me all the way back at the very first choice, and then lets me continue on from there. Okay, well that's interesting. So we can keep on trying stuff, and figure ah, out some, some... Apparently, interesting the details. ...sold a Pegasus that he did not exactly own. Lepino always wiggled out of trouble, given time. But he was out of time. The Ravens had figured out that Lepino was a rebel spy. If the fleet reached him first, they'd string him up for that. Never mind the winged horse. I might as well go down the line of rebellion. Because if not, then, um... Mm, things might get confusing if I go for the Desert Temple first. I figure that's like, you know, we do our first choices, our second choices, and then we finally go down the temple. Pino had apparently managed to confuse the judge by arguing that he hadn't actually stolen a winged horse. He'd only sold it. But wait, where was the prison? The village was empty. Had had everybody fled the ravens? That is a very good question. I guess we will have to find out. Lapino better be worth it. He better be a grand old Don't friend. Look down, he told himself. Don't look down. Oh, we've been through worse. We were just fighting in a war. Uh oh, there are the ravens. I will smite them with fire. Or not. Oh boy. That's a lot of them. <laughs> 